looking at this photo brings back memories of when I was in, I'd say, the best shape of my life. The best shape of my life was when I was in the military. And seeing this brother in this image reminds me of the shape that I was in when I was in the military. Now, we train to be in that type of shape. The stress level that our bodies and our minds are put through is insane just to get to this type of shape because when in a combat situation yes we have our buddy to rely upon we watch out for each other's back but then there are times when we have to rely on our own strength and our own abilities we have to be able to carry our own weight. So when we're trained, we're put through some of the most intense type of training to the point where some of the toughest guys that we know broke down in tears. They could not handle it because of the amount of stress that was placed upon our minds, our emotions, and our bodies. Physical strength, physical agility. There's times that we had to repel with an enormous amount of weight on our backs and on our shoulders, especially if you were a 50 cal gunner. And you had to carry your own weight and then you had to carry the spare barrel. You had to carry, some people carry the utility bag on top of their weight or you had to carry the ammo. Uh, when we did PT, there's time that we did PT or physical training in full gear rucksacks. So we were in tip top condition and it trained our mind to the point where we feared nothing, but then there's times that we do meet our weaknesses. And because of the strength of our minds, because of the fact that we were taught to laugh at pain, even in our weakest hour, we became strong because then we had to endure. We had to, had to survive. And if we came to the place where we had to kick off some of the weight, say if we're about to cross over a lake or a river or we have to swim, sometimes you have to let go of some weight. Well, that's the way it is in life in each in every one of our lives, we deal with situations where we come to the time where we have to start shedding weight. And there's nothing wrong with being selfish sometimes. Self-preservation is vitally important. You never put someone else's life above your own unless of course it's your child your family member your loved one wife husband there's people that sacrifice themselves because they have so much love within themselves that they don't want to see their family member or loved one destroyed but then there are times where that family member that loved one or even that girlfriend or boyfriend, husband or wife, need to take responsibility for their own lives, their own circumstances, their own problems. And many of the problems that people face in life 
are problems that they brought upon themselves. They refuse to listen to sound reasoning or sound advice. They felt that they knew it all. They felt that they were grown. And they refused to listen to the advice of those that was able to see what they could not see themselves because sometimes situation, circumstances, and even individuals blind us allow us not to see the impending dangers that's coming, the self-destructive behavior and attitude that many people take upon themselves in the name of helping someone else out, bearing someone else's burdens, carrying someone else's weight. It's like you're in a boat and the boat has too much weight in it. There's like more people in there, two or three people with a lot of weight because you know people like to hold on to their personal belongings, things that mean that's very dear to them. So they want to hold on to it. And, but they need to shed weight. So they're willing to sacrifice their life to hold on to things that really don't benefit them. And even if you're in a relationship and you're trying to carry the weight of someone else or you're trying to help someone else, a family member or whoever it may be, you're steady pulling yourself down. You're stressing out, you have no food. Uh, it's very difficult now for you to pay your bills because now you're taking the weight of someone that's not really helping themselves. You're carrying dead weight. And sometimes it's better just to let that dead weight go. It's like if you have a loved one or a friend that's hanging over a cliff and you're holding on to them for dear life and they're holding on to you for dear life. And in the same example, someone is drowning and, they're, and you're trying to save them, but yet they're pulling you under out of fear. They're fearful of losing their life and their self-preservation kicks in and they grabs you. And they can't hear sound reasoning and you're telling them to try to relax, I got you, but yet they're pulling you under. But you're trying to save them because you have so much love for them. Sometimes it's just best to let them go to save yourself. So if you're holding on to your loved one and they're hanging off a cliff and you're telling them, I got you. And they're saying, don't drop me, don't let me go. And you look at them dead in the eyes. And for the life of you, you're trying to save this person's life. You don't want to let them go. But yet, you're starting to feel yourself begin to start going along with the momentum. You, you find yourself starting to fall off and you're trying to keep from going over yourself. Sometimes it's just best to let them go to save your own life. Yes, some people may look at that as being selfish, but there's nothing wrong with being selfish when it comes to saving your own life versus someone that refuse to do the things they need to do to save their own lives. But I wanna end with a scripture. And there's a message behind what I'm saying because people in life take on weight that's unnecessary, weight that's pulling them down, in relationships, you have women that's doing well for themselves, that have children, that's working, taking care of them children. She have a home, she have her vehicle, her, her refrigerator is full of food. And then she meets a guy. And the guy really don't have any 
goals for himself. And so he leeches on. And life is so full of so many leeches. Where they will leech upon those that are strong to the point where they leak so much where the person that they're leeching off of becomes weak themselves. And their hands begin to start slipping from life. They become depressed. They begin to lack. They start to struggle. So sometimes it's best to let that extra weight go. I mentioned in a prior video to kick those demons out. And there's people that got upset because they were in that situation where they themselves were leeching off of others. They were living off of someone else and they are not doing what they should be doing to save their own lives. But they put their lives in the hands of someone else. And these are grown men. Or even grown women. So they become upset when you say, put those demons out because they're dragging you down. And the same applies for spiritual warfare. There's spiritual vampires that constantly suck the energy, suck the life out of you and you need to let them go and in many cases they refuse to go without a fight there may be a fight there may be a struggle there may be threats words may go back and forth to hurt each other's feelings but that's only revealing and manifesting what they truly felt in their hearts but because of the fact that you were their life force you were their food and shelter you were their welfare system they tolerated you but they really didn't want you they really can't stand you but because you are their welfare system or life force they tolerated you so I'm going to end with the scriptures Hebrews 12 and 1 which reads as follows wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do it so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us again wherefore seeing we are also compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses let us lay aside every weight and the sin which do us so easily beset us and let us run with patience see too many people rush things see fools rush into places where wise men fear to tread Again, fools rush in where wise men fear to tread. See, there's places that a wise man won't go, but a fool would rush in. So sometimes you just have to be patient. Run with patience the race that is set before us. Yes, we are in a race. We are in a race with time. We are in a race with life. And every year takes the number. We're racing death. Because we're always hearing that someone has passed on from this life to the next. Strokes and heart attacks. 
cancer, diabetes, suicide, murder. So yes, it's a race. And the people that tend to not run with patience, those that rush into things where, where wise men fear to tread, they oftentimes find themselves running off a cliff or drowning. And like the description I gave of the person drowning, you're trying to save them, they panic. And in their panic, they start pulling you under. So to save your own self, you have to let go of that weight that's dragging you down. You should not have to depend upon someone else to feed you, especially if it's because of the, of the weight that you're holding on to. You're trying to, to be the life force of someone that refused to be the life force of themselves. So if you have an individual living in your house, a grown man, a grown woman, that refuse to do for themselves, you need to kick them out. Love them from a distance. Sometimes that's the best type of love, is to love them from a distance. Because now, you're not taking on the stresses, the unnecessary stresses of someone that refused to help themselves. But like I mentioned about this image, I was in the best shape of my life. And I'm still in pretty good shape. But at that time, I was strong. I, I had the attitude and I still have this attitude. Like if I'm in the car with somebody and I don't care where we end up, if people start talking funny, and they tell me, I remember this guy told me as a choir director, man, we was going to sing at this one place. And he jokingly said to me, because see, I take things serious. Sometimes I think I'm a little too serious. And he said to me, he said, get out. So, okay, open the door. So stop the car. I made the dude stop the car. He's like, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Nah, you only got one time to tell me to get out of your car. See, I'm all the way from home, man. I, I, I don't have my car with me. My car is parked in front of my house, but we decided as a choir to go together. You know, we, we, we were carpooling, right? So I didn't have my car with me. I didn't have no bus fare on me because I'm going with the choir. And he jokingly said to me, get out. I said, stop the car. And I got out and I started grunting it. I started walking. It was cold out too, but my body and my mind was trained for it. I was trained for those, those, for those unexpected events. So I had no problem getting out walking. And before you realize it, I just about beat them where we had to go. I got out and I walked. And from that point on, I never got in that person's car again. And he was like, I was just kidding with you. Don't joke with me like that. But because my mind and my body was in shape, I got out and I walked. I never had to depend upon no one. I refused to depend upon someone. Yes, everybody needs someone. See, that's the purpose of family. You should be able to depend upon your family and your loved ones. But when it comes to strangers, I refuse to beg anybody. So, and another story before I decide to before I end this, this video, me and, a, we and, me and one of my best friends, man, when I, we both got out of the service and he's a Marine and I was Army, right? And we was in Binghamton, New York. 
at a party, right? And his car broke down right outside Binghamton. And we were coming to Syracuse, New York, right? So his car broke down right outside Binghamton. And this had to be, it had to be about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. And so he pulled his car over on the side of the road. And this is where, you know, it's good to, to be in shape, to have the mind and the body that's in shape, that you condition. And there's some spiritual food in this. If, if you're spiritual and you know how to uh, cipher the gems out of what I'm about to say, okay? It's in the natural, but it also operates in the spirit as well. And so his car broke down outside of Binghamton. And he said, well, he said, um, and at the time we didn't have like cell phones. I think cell phones were just coming out and they had those big bag looking cell phones that you put inside your car. They didn't have the ones you could just put in your pocket. They had them big old bag looking things that they put in the car. You had to plug into the cigarette lighter. But anyway, we didn't even have that. No, no type of communication, none whatsoever. Just stranded on a dark road. There was no lights. And the only two people out there was a Marine and an Army guy. And me and, me and my friend, man, Dave, his name is Dave. Me and Dave, to this day, we, we compete against each other. It could be chess. We could be playing chess. I don't care what it is. We, we always compete. We run and race each other. And that's what we did, you know, because, you know, Army's better than Marine, Marine better than Army, whatever, whatever. We, we've always competed like that. So I told Dave, I said, yo, man, I said, well, I said let's just walk back, man. And see, that in a way was challenging him. He's like, okay. So we started walking. Man, we walked from Binghamton to Syracuse, New York. Four day in the morning. We walked from there because we, we were both military trained. Our minds were conditioned. Our bodies were conditioned. We didn't break a sweat and we weren't cramping up. We were in shape, we were in condition. So when it comes to your spiritual life, it pays to be conditioned. Lay aside every weight, everything that you're holding on to in life that's dragging you down, that's pulling you down. Even when it comes to your own children, if you see that they're dragging you down and pulling them down and you can only do so much, sometimes it's just best to love from a distance, to back away, especially if they grown and refuse to listen to what you have to say. So you have to lay aside every weight. Don't hold on to weight, but let it go, lay it aside. But lay aside every weight and the sin, the things that, that we have going on in our lives that's spiritually, that's emotionally dragging us down. I don't care if you view yourself as an atheist, agnostic, homosexual, lesbian, whatever you choose to take on to yourself is a weight. And regardless of how much you claim to believe in God and not believe in God, your subconscious, your spirit, your soul testifies against you. Your soul actually testifies against your own soul. So although you put it in your heart, in the mind that God is not real, that the Bible's not real and it's just a book written by men to deceive and control men. Your subconscious spirit, your subconscious mind thinks different. And it has an effect on your life, your emotions, your thoughts, your strength versus your weakness and even the energy or people that surrounds you, it all testifies against you. Truth is always going to testify in favor of truth. So your subconscious mind 
is working in opposition against you and against what you claim to believe and what you refuse to believe because you want or choose to remain in your mess. So let us lay aside every weight and the sins which do it so easily beset us. When you carry the, those weights and that sin, it easily beset us. It holds you back. It burdens you so easily. There's people that have had spiritual experiences, I'm going to call it, where they had visions or dreams where they were being drugged or people that claim to have uh, had a near-death experience or a death experience and they were drugged without effort by demons. The demons just grabbed them and just drugged them. They had no type of physical strength against these demons. Just, just how, it's like paperweight. It was like no effort for these demons to just grab you, yoke you up, chain you up, and just drag you, and you're screaming and crying because you had no strength to ward off these entities because you were weak. So, sin, weight and sin so easily beset you. It holds you back. It burdens you. And then it says, let us run. It's telling you what to do. Right here you have an ingredient on how to free yourself. Let us run with patience. Don't rush into anything. Fools rush in where wise men fear to tread. So let us run with patience the race that's before us. Looking to the author and the finisher of our faith. So feedback, tell me what you think, subscribe, click on the cash app button in the description box and donate to the channel. Until next time, I'm fearless.